Hello people and welcome aboard to follow yet another World Team Carcassonne Online Championship uh, friendly match today between Ukraine and Hungary, two very experienced teams and um, um, with that said we will also have five exciting matches today to share as all of the players have um, on Ukraine's side, uh, at least all are all of them are at least um, above the expert level, so above 500 ELO on the BGA. And on Ukraine's side, um, none of the players goes uh, less than 400. So you can see the today's lineups in the front of me and I will actually link the website to the chat so you can also find the lineups there. That is the um, Kargasun Ukraine site. Um, today I was thinking that we would be yeah, we, uh, we could start with, for example, um, with Tania and Cinderella and watch their first game and then uh, then perhaps we'll switch to other games. With that said, we will actually immediately switch to Tanya's page, just in case they have started early. Looks like they haven't. Um, so we still have almost, well, just a bit, bit less than uh, three weeks until the first, um, yeah, um, un until the first match week begins. So the match week will begin on the 15th of, um, of April. So that will be Monday and that will be the first, first day of the actual tournament. Uh, we still have also the registrations available up until uh, I think it was the 10th of April. So there are still two weeks left of the registration stage. So if you do not have your team signed up yet, uh, but you do have a team, then make sure that you that you have the registrations in order and do not be late. You still have plenty of time, but uh, the most disastrous scenario, of course, would be that uh, a country has a team but does not for some reason or another, get it registered in time. And we also go into our first game. So Tanya versus Cinderella. Okay, uh, do let me know if the sound is all right and if it needs adjusting then I will adjust it. Looks like Tanya has a nice, some, well, somewhat nice looking road um, in in her control. Also was able. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! I mean, like yeah, this is like sort of legit, but uh, I think this is already a a move that I don't like because it had 
Tanya went over here with the road monastery and ended his road, uh, ended her, excuse me, her road from the other direction uh, or from the other side, then he could kind of like uh, um, lead from from this monastery. So the completion of the monastery would be not uh, would not be so important, but also because there was already a two point. Uh, um, well, well, let's say a two-point road end on the left side, then uh, at least for me it would be really enticing to just have a, um, a four-point road and then in need of one straight line and one curve to then grab this other um, only vacant road end available and join it to my road and then uh, just run off with it, with the whole uh, shenanigans. However, since Tanya decides otherwise, uh, it does still pay off quite nicely. Uh, gets to finish her road, gets a nice, uh, well-developed seven-point monastery, and there is also a nine-point field in the making both players with one meeple on it and there was a bit of a um, vulnerable position with Cinderella's uh, monastery here since it was tied to this uh, city but uh, given that Tanya was, would be the controlling side of the city, uh, it would not be so um, important to actually place anything here. Although he, uh, although Cinderella might be losing a small mini battle if uh, nothing would be if nothing would be placed here, because this castle is worth uh, actually seven points only, maybe eight if something uh, went over here, but. Uh, Uh, well, it would be rather on equal on equal terms, but uh, now since uh, Cinderella went with a third meeple also over here, which I think was a totally legit move, because this with, because this large castle was rather easily completable with only needing uh, one triangle and one. Um, city cap with a field. I think this was well, sort of a must, if I may, if I may say so myself. Um, but it did kind of backfire because now Cinderella has uh, a meeple trapped on one point, and now Cinderella is losing a mini battle with this seven-point monastery versus a four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten-point city controlled by Tanya, three meeples to two. And as you can see, um, the result um, is very critical because Tanya is controlling this uh, city with three meeples. But uh, um, although the mini battle is fought between this monastery and this city, uh, because Cinderella has one extra meeple over here, he basically has four meeples invested into a losing mini battle because he's getting 8 points from a monastery, plus 1 point from this, so 9 points, versus a 10 point ruin for Tanya. So Tanya has one meeple less invested, and he's uh, and she is still scoring 1 point more. So, that is a wonderful situation for Tanya here. There's also a wonderful looking uh, monastery spot over here, but there is only one monastery left in the deck, which is a road monastery. And considering that uh, Cinderella actually has a nice looking monastery spot over here, and, uh, and he can get the monastery meeple back, uh, if I'd be Tanya, I would be very 
very um, prioritizing with uh, getting this monastery square blocked with any piece of road because there are no regular monasteries left they are all gone Tanya now with a maple advantage Okay, I'm not sure if I like this. Uh, is there vanilla city caps? One, two, three, four. Okay, there's one vanilla city cap remaining. But uh, she did achieve the most important goal, which is to block the uh, the wonderful spot for a road monastery here. So even though this block is not like a full block, it is still very much worthwhile to do just to be able to negate the the existing threat of uh, of Cinderella getting the road monastery and scoring immediately eight points without well like basically without meeple investment. Cinderella's idea. Um, with his next city cap, if there are actually if there are city caps with a road remaining to the right, uh, which is not actually a given, there is at least one city cap remaining with a road, uh, a city crossroad, and then there are also two daggers. But uh, if Cinderella cannot use a city cap over here to take four points, then the next best thing would be to just, I think, pre-complete this six-point city and then uh, get a six-point city um, immediately completed if Cinderella manages to get that final vanilla city cap. Although he is now 11 points up on the scoreboard. Um, 11, 18, 26, 27, 19, 17, and is this 11 actually? 5, 7, it's an 11 point ruin, so um, minus 6, oh sorry, plus, uh, yeah, plus 6 for red, I think, at this point. Uh, which is also why Tanya is trying to um, invest her meebles into like small features which, uh, which she would be getting back most likely. It's not a given that she will get this meeple back, but she has to risk um, a little at this point, because even though she is in a meeple advantage, or well, she was, um, she can afford to to invest one meeple into a feature and still have meeples to score quick points, mainly from city caps. But she also needs a maple to be invested to this monastery in case uh, she draws the final uh, road monastery. Rather interesting move by Cinderella here. There is one city crossroad remaining. Uh, there are no daggers that go here because there is one, there is two, and there is three. Um, are there Doritos? I would think there are one, two, three. 
there are two road triangles that still go here and this would actually be a huge scoring opportunity for Tanya. Getting his meeple, uh, getting her meeple back, scoring two points, like uh, two more points from the road, and then um, depending on whether the road triangle comes with a shield or not, it's gonna be a six or seven point castle. So a so an eight or nine point move with just one turn, uh, which would be absolutely massive for Tanya. But Cinderella just gonna score uh, quick points here. Needs to take advantage of the fact that he uh, that he does have a Mibble in hand. Tanya pulls the final remaining pulls the final remaining Vanilla City Cap. I I have only disagree with her move here. Like sure she gets the Mibble back, but there are multiple uh, triple cities and multiple triangles remaining which Cinderella can now use to get a meeple back and uh, and meeple a a city plus Tanya neglected an empty city cap which immediately was costly because Cinderella was able to take four points from it As a small compensation, um, Tanya does block uh, Cinderella City, so it will be stuck on just four points. But um, will it be enough? It might, since Tanya is able to get a second meeple into a 15 point field and is now going to be able to block Cinderella's second meeple from connecting but she does need to take a while to count the remaining tiles and see whether there are actually any tiles available for Cinderella to actually get the connection there might actually be a regular uh, yeah, there might actually be one dagger remaining, which uh, no, there isn't. So cannot connect from here. But how about the road tiles? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All regular curves are out. One, two, three. Three, four, five, six. Two regular straight roads remaining. So I would say that this is gonna be the move for Tanya. Needs to protect that field. Plus, Tanya is now the only player who can actually score more points in any way because Cinderella does not have. A meeple in hand anymore. Oh no 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 what what is this? The I, the only thing that Tanya had to do was go here and prevent Cinderella from connecting to to the large uh, to the large field and getting and from getting nine points. What is going on in Tanya's head? I I have to wonder, but do you, she does even out the situation quite nicely, so fixing the arrow, but, but she only had a 50-50 chance of actually getting the final um, the final straight road. So I, I really don't understand why the move was this. Like me if she really pulled out like like a a five giga chat brain move and uh, uh, enticed Cinderella to connect so that she can then connect from here uh, like for, for the third time 
and to just like extend her field by three points and take away the six point field from Cinderella then I must applaud uh, but I I really have to doubt it because there was also a chance that uh, Tanya pulls this thing the final remaining uh, road triangle uh, and since she still had a meeple in hand it would be a seven point move and uh, she would be in control of a 15 point field versus a six point field so and if it if it comes like quickly enough she will still have a meeple in hand which she can use to take like five points from a ruin over here or something so i would be interested to know what was exactly going on in her head when she pulled this move like maybe she thought there were still starting tiles but i don't know I think it's still definitely has to be a mistake. Uh, but Cinderella does still manage to win by one point, even though Tanya was able to uh, to bring her third to, to bring her third meeple to the uh, to the large farm, which resulted to be an 18 point farm. So that is Cinderella leading 1-0 in that match. Let's have a look see at Let's have a look see for example at uh, Stare Bravo. As one his first game against Mosobhal. Oh, by the way, uh, feel free to um, to update the scores in the chat. Because I will be uh, marking down the end score and it will it will be done uh, like more swiftly um, if I already know the scores at least partially. Okay, a significant point lead for Stare Pravo, a plus 32, and it seems like Mosapal is is in a really bad situation here. Minus four, minus 36, and let's count this ruin as equal because there is still one uh, triple city with a road remaining, which I don't know for some reason could go here, uh, but then yeah, plus 36, uh, like. I'd say this road is equal also. Um, red is controlling the field tw with 12 points, so plus 48, plus 42, plus, f plus, plus 40 points. Plus 40 points with tw 27 tiles remaining and the meeples are equal. So uh, it looks like a uh, kind of a dead situation for, for Mosopal here. And it, it looks like uh, Mosopal is indeed not really having a, a nice time with this one. Ending early from a, from a practice game, like, uh, although the result doesn't really matter, I mean, you could still, like, try to just play, like, precisely and just practice your precision uh, to practice your precision but uh, 
well, I guess Mosopal is not uh, having any of that today, which means it will be 1-0 uh, uh, for Ukraine. So let's do an update on that. And let's also write it in the chat myself. Um, so, dun, 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 dun. case. Then, how about we check out on smile and eater oh my God. <clears throat> um, eater winning 1-0 at the moment both at both players at 600 and yeah this definitely looks like a more more even game looks like there is already a large field brewing there is a nice um, road monastery spot which could increase the size of the field even further Smile able to get a fantastic tile, take four points and block Eater's um, monastery at the same time. Eater, the first player, gonna be on the field. And whatever tile Smile gets, uh, I think he will be looking to drop a farmer here. Yes, he will. And now with this red monastery being blocked uh green is gonna be in a uh, in a meeple advantage like long term and uh, is therefore a slight favorite or actually should i say a a big favorite to eventually win the field fight Eater possibly able to uh, to even out the scores with this large city. So, for example, over here, I imagine he's uh, he's gonna be just protecting it and try to complete it. I mean, taking four points here, it's like doable, but it's I think it would be much weaker move wow doing none of that that is that's a, that that is extremely surprising uh, i did not expect this because i like the field is going to be able to be attacked like later on there was no rush in getting your second in, in, there was no rush in getting your second people onto the field there is an attacking spot from here and then also from here where eater now now attacked from and then maybe even later just placing uh, a a field people to here and then connecting uh, through the road monastery or just from here like there was absolutely no rush in attacking the field but well now it happened um yeah smile putting a quad city in his city which i also think is is a bit of a surprising move given that uh, he could have just added it over over here maybe and then uh, just uh, get a four point city and attack this uh, large um, this large castle later because 
um, when you add a quad city, it's gonna um, it's gonna increase the amount of attacking spots for like well not, not necessarily increase the size of, of attacking spots, but it's gonna be um, it's gonna delay the completion and when Eater is going to most likely still try to add like uh, triangles or triple cities to this city so that uh, he can then threaten to complete it then they will uh, likely add the platforms that Smile needs to attack this city like later on so with this um, like it did sure it, it, it did of course ensure that um, Eater was not going to be ever able to complete the castle because all three tube dividers were out but it also created a threat of being in a situation where Smile ended up now being with a three point ruin versus a four five six seven eight nine ten point ruin or twelve of with a three point ruin versus a twelve or thirteen point ruin uh, whenever Eater gets a road triangle over here, which there are still three remaining, two with the shield and uh, one without the shield. And instead, from a six hundred, from from a six hundred rated player, I. I have to be very critical about moves like this because like even though there were a like multiple tiles uh, that smile could use as a, as curves to bring this farmer in he was in a rather nice position to be honest because he had this monastery over here that he can get back um, and he had a meeple for quick point scoring like I, I get that um, he's gonna need to attack this field at some point if he wants to win uh, he's gonna need to at least uh, at, at least tie it but I think this um, this spot to uh, to attack the field was a bit too risky Because even though, uh, even, even if Eater was not going to be able to, to block it like he did, there was also a city crossword remaining as well. And now that Smile has two meeples, I mean, there is an obvious attacking spot, which he is going to use immediately. And he's 27 points ahead on the scoreboard. 30, 23, 20, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 points ahead, um, minus the field, which is loads, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 30 point field. So, yeah, uh, smile is like uh, plus 8 um, if he manages to to even out the field still needs to bring in this meeple but Eater now I imagine is gonna attack from here needs to use all available attacking spots to the field I don't think he has the luxury to wait for like any quick point tiles with 12 tiles remaining and with only one meeple in hand when he is minus 8 without the field I don't think he has the luxury so I think he is gonna have to attack the field right away because there are still uh, multiple crossroads remaining well two crossroads but I imagine there are curves 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So two crossroads, two curves. 
So rather nice chances of um, reconnecting from here. Maybe even from here. Because other... No, there are no monasteries. One, two, three... There are two vanilla city caps remaining. So he has... If, if he goes here, drops a farmer, he's going to have six tiles to connect his fourth people to the field, which would put him in a rather great position because there is then only like one like one good spot to attack the field from. Uh, now this is not it, I think. Or is it? I mean... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There is only one regular curve. But why is Smile limiting himself? Oh, no, 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 no. No, this is... Like, why would you do that? I... Like, if you are counting on getting the curve, you might as well, like, go here and drop your second farmer, like, like, dro like drop your drop your final meeple to this field anyway, and then try getting two meeples in with the final remaining curve. Are they, like, registering that there is an alternative attacking spot? Like, surely they are. But neither player doesn't seem to. Yeah, neither player doesn't seem too eager to actually use it. Ah, apologies. The uh, scoreboard is blocking the view a bit. Okay, that should be better. Yes, Glovir, it will be um, it it will be enough to uh, yeah it will be enough for Green to equalize the field, but uh, the thing is that uh, you know uh, Green has to get two meeples to the farm, whilst Red actually has to get only one. So okay, now there is this, but the thing is that uh, this connection needs a curve which is the same curve that green needs already here. Although this does come with a benefit that uh, it's going to be difficult for Eater to find a good connection spot now. Because like this doesn't really work. Because the only tile to go here is the the curve right or if there is a no never mind never mind there is no dagger so the only one would be the, the curve which is needed everywhere and if red gets the curve he's gonna win anyway uh, like probably okay well green gets the curve uh, should be going here. Although, actually, are there any... I think there is still one curvy tile. Okay, well, this... Which was this. Are there straight roads? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven... There is one straight road. Which will decide the game. If Red gets it, he has definitely won it doesn't get it, uh, which leads to me thinking that Red does not have enough points banked to win this game. Uh, yeah, definitely not. An 11 point win for the Ukrainian. 
and I think it is now one and one, right? Um, Peter, I know I know I checked the situation before, but I I already forgot it. So yeah, one one at the moment. So it's going to be a decider between the two. Let's see how Siegfried is doing. Playing a game. So, ooh, actually, he's playing his second game and he is losing 1 0 at the moment. And I. Oh. Well, hold up. Did he just finish the second game? Um, okay. So he hasn't even started his second game. Okay, the pace seems to be not too, not too fast. So where is Nazario going then? In the game, Robil is at the moment winning 1-0. Let's have a look. See, okay, 49 tiles remaining. Let's have a look at. The game between Asario and Robil. Okay, so Nasario with a nice developed monastery, which is not completed yet. Uh, these situations, these situations can often get a bit tricky. Because if, uh, if if Robil manages to uh, to like finish this four point castle, then this square is very much blockable. Nasario now, yes, this I think is the right is the right thing to do, even though uh, the the triangle would be neatly fitting over here as well. But I think this. This square was just uh, a bit too important because it was an immediate to yeah an, an immediate to uh, to Meeple's back to Nasario's hand. Um, I actually would have even liked Nasario to drop a farmer here because um, at the moment it's looking like um, Robil will be able to enjoy. A, a a six or even a nine point like private field. If uh, Robil gets this uh, four point city completed uh, quickly enough, with like a, a starting tile as the highest priority tile, I'd say, then I'd say that would be just a dream for Robil to have a nine point private field. With no one being able to attack it, with no one being able to attack to it, um, at least in a good while, because the only attacking point would be over here, and it's really feisty situation over here on on the left, and uh, a nine point investment on a field with one meeple is always a worthy field meeple. However, Robil is does need to save his uh, large city construction. Uh, it doesn't look like it's gonna get really finished uh, that quickly, at least because he's gonna need a starting tile or a city crossroad over here, which is the same tile that he needs over 
here as well. And as long as this city is not like completed from these directions, then I think this would this spot would be the priority for a starting tile. But uh, Nazario does now um, make it way easier for uh, for Robil to choose where to put the starting tile to. Since Nazario just now gave a very valid reason for Robil to use just daggers over here and then um, city crossroads and starting tiles over here. I gotta say I would have actually even preferred uh, Nazario to direct this crossroad to the left so that uh, yeah, Robila would have to choose whether to use a starting tile or a city crossroad here or then over here and then uh, perhaps this city would now not be so uh, so threatful. Okay, Robil is now finally able to block Nazario city. Does have to use a valuable city cap to make that happen, but at least he at least he is able to even out the the blocked meeples to like with one point versus one point, although this this lad has more potential because there are still two daggers that can get this meeple out. But in the worst case scenario, um, Robil does not get either of those two daggers and it's gonna be a mini battle of one point versus one point. And even though this farmer is now at six points and looks quite, uh, yeah, looks to be quite boxed in. There is still this one spot left to grow the field. And this is because Nazario did not decide to, uh, to point a road to the left, limiting the, limiting the size of the field. But the good news are that uh, at the moment all of the city caps with a road which Robil could use here to, um, to place like extra city caps on his field, he already has like better usage elsewhere. Like he can use the daggers over here, the starting tiles over here, and then with City crossroads. He can just take two uh, two points elsewhere and not risk this maple getting blocked completely. Rubble also taking a bit of a gamble with this city completion because uh, he, like he does threaten to actually complete it, but he is now doing it with a tube divider starting a new city, um, but also giving an, an easy blocking opportunity for Nazario to make sure that this large city is never finished. I imagine like if Robil is going, oh, I was gonna say I imagine if Robil is gonna go like full like full steam ahead, trying to um, trying to save the city, then 
he might be going over uh, here like this so to the other direction so that there is a field and field but then one two three four five six actually yeah there is only one straight road remaining which he would be able to then use here to save yeah well i'm not gonna count all the all the possible tiles but there is actually a chance that uh, turning it this way is like slightly better in terms of um, in terms of um, lowering the block rate, lowering the, the blocking chances. And now there is still, I think, one starting tile in the deck. So as soon as Robil gets any uh, like regular road tile, I assume he's gonna go over here to limit this square to a starting tile so that this square cannot then be blocked. Nazario, I think, even though he could save the city, is this worth it? Because then it would restrict this square to a uh, like a f to a field um, to to a field plus city um, tile. And would then uh, uh, make make it easier for uh, yeah would would make it easier for himself to block this square. Um, now it doesn't of course matter because he gets the tile he needs anyway. Though he does need to use a vanilla city cap, which he already needs over here. And now there are only two of those remaining. also puts himself at risk of getting a meeple blocked with a triple city or with a triangle. I, I, I can't understand this move. Oh, actually, no, I thought there was only two triple cities with us with a road gone, but they are all gone. So yeah, this is, this is fine. Okay, so red is now left with a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 point ruin. Okay, so 7.5 points per meeple versus... Well, actually, 16 points with 3 meeples versus 5 points for 1 meeple, so... An 11 point advantage for two lost meeples. So 5.5 me uh, points more per meeple. It's, it's not that great. Especially when you are nine points behind on scoreboard. Now even more. It's looking, I'd say, uh, rather nice for Nasario. Definitely, I think Nasario has an advantage in this. Okay, taking a two-point road. I'm not sure if I like that too much. Now just using a very valuable road monastery to to finish the, the set road. Uh, when there was a six, a, a six. Oh my god. A six point monastery spot available and he had two meeples in hand and I think he's gonna need a lot of uh, a lot of luck to actually win this 
because he is in a meeple disadvantage and with the features that with with the features that he has on the field uh he might not be in the most comfortable situation they might not be even enough to to um to even the points on the scoreboard let's make us uh, let's make a quick calculations so this was 15 i think let's count one more time 4 6 10 yeah so 15 points 16 22 23 uh 18 15 13 so to 47 so red is minus 3 and in a tumible disadvantage in a situation where red uh, where excuse me where yellow has all the threats so a threat of completing this city a threat of completing this city and more meeples i mean it's just a horrible situation for red at the moment and i don't think it's gonna get too much better because the board is quite dry and uh, with the meeple advantage that yellow has um, he is gonna be able to take control of the fields and um, it might be so that uh, this red farmer that that Robil just placed, uh, it might be in vain. Uh, Nazario might be actually trying to to win this farm outright with two farmers, because there is still uh, two vanilla city caps remaining, and going here with a farmer for yellow then uh, completing this city would make it a nine point field and then connect uh, both farmers and then with a second farmer from here i mean red can just uh, red just can't do really anything to to defend this farm because he can't get meeples back from anywhere except from here and this is sort of a tall order when you when you when you take into account that there are only 11 tiles remaining uh, and you need to use meebles quite fast uh, on the fields specifically on the fields to have a chance at uh, um, yeah to have to have a chance at uh, equalizing uh, the fields or be ahead on them. Nasario now I think uh, either here, oh sorry, uh, here and a meeple on the field, here and a meeple on the field, or like anywhere on this area with a meeple on the field, uh, I think is fine. But like yeah i would definitely keep this as the first option because of the two vanilla city caps that are remaining and it would be a huge tile for nasario interesting so instead he is trying to yeah he's trying to make absolutely certain that robil cannot finish this city because there were two city crossroads left so are there road triangles no they're not so there is nothing that goes here uh, now i imagine like again um either go actually this would be a great move or then just finish your city and no uh... <sighs> no 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 not not this not this you don't need to finish this city 
like even though there is a triple city remaining, uh, this city doesn't matter if it gets completed or not. Like the only thing that yellow has to do is to score points at this point because like plus 9, plus 10, plus 13, plus uh, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 20, this field is equal uh, 5, 4, minus 2, minus 6. Okay, so uh, yellow is minus 6 and he's plus 1 meeple. So if he just takes like uh, 6 points here by completing the castle and dropping a farmer, he's going to be uh, plus minus uh, 0 and he has um, 1 meeple more. But because the a large amount of city caps that are remaining, I think this would have been just a glorious move. Because you have a chance at, uh, in, the, in the worst case scenario, just overtake a six point farm uh, from, from here, from here, or by completing the city. And if you complete the city, you have like, you are like basically um, invincible at that point. But this just having a 50-50 option uh, that you don't need is just a waste of uh, is just a waste of a turn in my opinion. Because what if you don't get uh, like either of these vanilla stick caps? Like perhaps this meeple is gonna be stuck in one point. This at two points. I mean, Nazario might actually have, and I'd say does actually have chances to still lose this game, even though he is and at le well at least was in a great position. Now I am not too sure. Like he has two. Um, rather high uh, impact tiles still, this um, vanilla city cap, and of course now this triple city. Let's count the remaining city caps. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, so 20, so 3 city caps remaining after this, which I think it's going to be still a nice six point chance. And now, now Robil does exactly what I wanted Nazario to do. Because the, um, the amount of city caps uh, that are still remaining is, uh, well, three, there is a good chance that Robil will be able to increase the size of this uh, northern field, even though he might not be able to actually connect to the six point field. And this now prevents Lazario from actually completing this city. Now he's, that, now he's trying to connect from here. And like I said, I think Lazario now has chances to lose this game still. A, a one point move. Versus a six point move. There is still still the um, Vanilla City Cap, but I don't think it's in Robil's interest to place it here. Actually, it is. It's plus two for Robil, even if he would complete Nazario City, because this will bring three more points to the field, and this castle will then be um, will then belong only to Robil. So, like three plus three. Uh, minus the four points for completing the city. So, okay, uh, it's gonna be in in Nazario's hands, so he's gonna be able to get the six points. 
but just look at the potential that Nazario had if he just does stuff like not this but goes over here just increases the size of the field and just prepares to get some of the remaining road tiles or like just just one of the remaining road tiles uh, this or then a uh, a regular uh, crossroad or then the vanilla city cap and just overrun the field like an easy plan but uh, Nasario had other ideas and just look how close this was I think Nasario wins by like wait does he win or does he lose tie no so three points and then three but but because Nasario was the starting player he loses the creed the absolute creed of Nasario going over here instead of just uh, not 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 settling for a 50-50 which he didn't get uh, not taking six point directly um, not going over here to prevent Robin from going over here like he did it it just ended up biting him and costing him like immensely the the prioritization of of the Ukrainian player just uh, it's ne it it needs a bit of work I'd say it need, needs a bit of work I think he definitely made some prioritization mistakes like even though it's always nice to like have like some 50-50s but not in a situation where you are in a meeple advantage and you don't need the 50-50s when you can just even the scores immediately and be up on meeples and then if you get the triple city on your on your next turn then good you get another two points without having to invest a meeple and there will then still like more city caps with a road uh, possible to be used over here later on and then maybe do the same thing but just take two points and either pretty complete or complete the city uh, major errors I have to say major errors and let's take a look was that another loss for Nasario it was it was so Robil wins 2-0 and it's going to be a 1-1 one, one. let's put that there and then uh, update the score to one and one and then we'll see how the other pairings are doing so let's take a look at Tania um, so Cinderella taking also a 2-0 bid win so putting uh, putting Hungary in a one to lead oh two Cinderella and it's like that one two and then we have uh, Let's have a look at Smile Eater. How's that going? 
Eater taking a 2-1. Uh, uh, two, yeah, 2-1 two, victory. So that's another point for, for Hungary. Um, smile, one, two, eater. That, and then the one and three. And then Siegfried might still be playing, so. And he is. Uh, still only the second game. At the moment, Pavel Brin is winning 1-0. Nine tiles remaining. Siegfried at two-point advantage on the scoreboard. Two-point calculations. A huge ruin um, at the moment. It is shared, so three and three. Then we have six point field for Siegfried, so putting him putting him at plus eight. Shared road. Six and six and six for Pavel Brin, so bring him at uh, minus two. Takes two points to Pavel Brin. Um at plus two at the moment. And has Yeah, has uh, at least a small chance, maybe, to overrun these parts if there are tiles to do that. Um, I can see at least one monastery which is missing. So one regular monastery going over here would be a six point move. And then maybe something here, but only if the monastery comes first because otherwise it will be just a point loss for the Ukrainian player. Three points now more to... Whoa, 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 whoa. what the... What is this? Uh, phew. Let's see, are there... City caps remaining for that. One, two, three. No city crossroads. One, two, three, four. And one, two. Oh, if there is a dagger, then it's a nice move. Yeah, there is still one dagger, so. Okay, it's doable, but I still don't actually like it. Because if you just take three points from here and direct the city uh, to here, then uh, it's you know it's three points. But when it should, when you do this, it's only one point because it creates one more city for Siegfried's uh, for Siegfried's uh, field. Um, and now you also leave a four-point road for Siegfried to take. With the same, um, what is, what's it called? Yeah, with uh, with the same uh, dagger. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so um, Joseph could could make use of that dagger anyways, but now you're basically uh, losing points on it. Are you? Uh, maybe. Oh, this is a clever move by 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 uh, bubble print, hoping to get the dagger, or perhaps if there are other curves remaining, take a u a, a huge road. But uh, I think like what did I say like plus two for him, then plus three, and then this so Siegfried at plus one, then now black is at plus one, but doesn't have a meeple. If he gets the final remaining um, uh, dagger, he is definitely going to win. But he will miss out on points um, on this 
monastery. Oh, what's that? Actually, it's gonna be three points anyway. Huh? What is? Okay, this is rather interesting. So a six point field for Siegfried, anticipating the curve to come. Um, but this was also three points more for Black's field. And now the remaining tiles are this one regular monastery and then something else. So depending on the final tile, uh, Siegfried might be going here and just trying to get his hands on the final monastery, which he does. Goes to black for seven points. Um, or maybe what? But it's nine. Oh, but, but this is a six point spot. Uh, when there was a seven point spot, and the fields are nine plus nine points, so there is no difference in that. So basically. Black just missed out on one extra point. Interesting choice. But I think Black's, Black still easily, easily wins this. With the help of this huge road. Okay, and with that said, it's gonna be yeah, definitely a win for Ukraine in this one, and they are going to get a point from that, but unfortunately, it is a bit too late, as Hungary already has three points. So let's do the final score. I will bring two O Siegfried and then update the score to its final standing of two to three. Two O wins. All matches except for Smile Eaters, so somewhat of a clean performance, I'd say, from um, from uh, both sides on the winner's part. Um, total games won um, five to six, or uh, yeah, um, five to six in favor of Hungary. Am I right? Let's double check. So two, three, four, five versus yeah, five and six. Well, there was definitely some uh, a nice gameplay today, as expected. Um, some uh, minor round, well, some more not so minor errors i want to say um of course there are gonna be a lot of uh, room for improvement still on the five and six hundred uh, level but uh, definitely yeah th these players are definitely not the ones you want to take lightly final score Two, three into um, in favor of Hungary. So commiserations for Ukraine. Um, congratulations to Hungary for taking um, at least their second win in a row um, in friendly matches. I think their um, previous um, previous 
a friendly match was against uh, Finland. Uh, let's double check. So a bunch of stuff here. Um, yeah, so this and yeah, um, on the 24th. So on on uh, last Sunday, they did take another 2-3 uh, win from uh, from Finland. So they are now at yeah two friendly match wins in a row, having a bit of a streak going on, and looks like they want to keep the streaks rather tight. Judging by the scores, two three with four six going in games, and then uh, today two three uh, five six going in games. Next up is going to be um, um, tomorrow, so a chance of a chance for a um, What's the word? It's it, it's not like revenge because they aren't playing against Hungary, but um, a chance for uh, let, whatever. Let's say let's say a chance for revenge um, for Ukraine um, taking on uh, Belgium in a friendly match tomorrow, um, starting at the same time, um, 21:30. Uh, sorry, 19:30 um, UTC, and I will be streaming that as well. Hopefully with uh, at least the same energy as today, and I actually have no doubts I will have the same energy. Furthermore, on 13th we are actually going to be seeing the first friendly match from Hong Kong. Uh, also against Belgium. Belgium really putting in the work here. Already had a um, two. Yeah, um, already had two friendly matches versus Croatia and Spain. Now tomorrow will be the third for Ukraine and then fourth for uh, then yeah then fourth against Hong Kong. Also Spain, as you can see, putting in the same amount of effort. Uh, first against Belgium, then against Croatia, then uh, uh, later next week, or is it next week? Uh, actually, um, hold on. Uh, yes, it's going to be next week. Um, so Spain versus Catalonia, and also spray, and uh, also Spain, uh, Ukraine. Likely going to be uh, streaming some of those matches as well, as long as I have the time, and time is one of the things that I have these days a lot. I thank you all for coming to watch the stream today, and we will see you tomorrow with some more Carcassonne content. Bye for now.